Hey everybody, how's it going? Marcos Vegas for Fight Up TV, powered by Stagefront VIP, being joined with Oscar Valdez, who fights this weekend, co-main event, taking on Adam Blue Nose Lopez in, in a rematch from a fight you had a few years back. Oscar, man, uh, good to see you as always, uh, in, in a great mood. I, if you could sum up how camp was this time around, uh, being there in, in Mexico, uh, how would you sum it up? A great camp. It's a great camp, man. It's in general, because, um, you know, working with Eddie Reynoso, it's, it's always a learning experience. You know, you always learn something from Eddie. But also, you know, training in Guadalajara and training this way that I've been one year um, off, the, off the sport, you know, just, I just coming back with more, with more hunger. I'm ready to step in the ring and, and, and give my best. Every day I was waking up motivated and um, giving it my best in the gym, like I always do. But it's just a little bit different coming off a loss, just sparked something different in me that, I, you know, I've... I feel hungrier to become a world champion again, and, but I gotta take it step by step, you know. And, and I've been enjoying the moment, you know. Every day working in the gym, if it's hard, if it's, if it's sometimes even boring, I enjoy every moment because I know that someday all this is gonna end. So, I've been enjoying the ride, I've been enjoying the moment, and I just can't wait to step in the ring. That loss that you had to Shakur, um, does it still weigh on you in a way where like you just want to show people like, hey, I'm better than that, I'm more than that. Forget about that. That was in the past, but also, like you mentioned, as a motivation to say, like, hey, I could still do great things. It's definitely a motivation. It's to definitely try to show, uh, to prove a point in boxing, because in the generations of uh, Floyd Mayweather, he put a he put a style that you always got to defeat. You got to always defend your undefeated record. So that became a thing. Fighters are now scared of facing other fighters because they're scared of losing their undefeated record. But the greats lost. Muhammad Ali lost, Sugar Ray Leonard lost, Roberto Duran, Julio Cesar Chavez, Eric Morales, Flo uh, Manny Pacquiao. They all lost, and they're all great champions, and they're Hall of Fame and legends. And it doesn't mean just because you have a loss, you can't be a great fighter. You can, what defines a boxer is not the wins, but when you lose and how strong you come back. And that's what I plan to do. I'm, I'm probably you know, showing this to the world that even though you have a loss, it doesn't mean that's the end of your career. You can still continue to win other fights and still build a name and build a career, that a legacy that you want to leave. The fight that Canelo had, it, like it happened at the same time uh, as your training camp. Was that like at all like hectic, like to the I don't want to say circus, but all the attention around Canelo at the camp uh, to schedule like your work with Eddie and. and have that just kind of be like peaceful for you on the contrary it's uh it's motivating yeah. because um the energy that everybody has in the ring in the gym it's uh it's great you know you got someone like julio, julio cesar rey martinez and you got um you got uh el morenito then you got uh you know obviously canelo alvarez and so just a great environment we all carry the same dream to become the best so you know being around that team you know is motivating we all we all we all feed from each other's energy, and it's something great. How, how was that when Eddie had to go? I would imagine the other people in, in your team kind of picked up uh, that slack and, and stepped in, right? Well, Eddie didn't leave. Uh, on the contrary, we're in the gym. Uh, we tried, we trained Saturdays. Eddie um, goes to a fight. We also got Carlos Barragan. Who, when sometimes when Eddie's not around, Carlos Barragan's always there to help us out. So it was, it's just a great team, starting from my manager, from my father, from Carlos Barragan, my cousin Baba, the Eddie Reynoso, then it's his own team. It's just a great team that we always make it work, to work hard. And kind of little fights, and then and Monday we're back in the gym. So it's just a great team. It was a great training camp, and we, like I said, we're going to plan a show like this this coming Saturday. Yeah, I saw that he came back to the gym on, on that Monday to train with you. I've, I've never seen that before, that literally they come back that Monday, but why did he come back to train? Because he got one thing in his mind. He's got that He's got that thing. He wants to get off his chest. He wants to fight Bivol. And how people think that he doesn't got a chance. They say that Bivol put a, put put a, put the hands on him, which he, you know, he, he did win the fight, but I think Canelo wasn't 100% there. Maybe he got a little too confident, just what I'm thinking. Maybe he wasn't, you know, um, he wasn't giving priority to boxing. He plays golf. He's also a businessman. He's a family man. He's a friend. He's a, he's a, he's a lot of things besides boxing. So if he's going to fight Bivol, I think he's now, what I see from him, being a smart fighter and being a, a guy who's dedicated, that's why he came back Monday to train after he fought Saturday because he wants to fight Bivol and train right for him. 
What'd you tell him about the fight that he had? Because I, I know uh, to many people, they felt that it wasn't like the same Canelo. Like there wasn't defense there. There wasn't counter punching. Uh, but other people have said like, look, John Ryder's a guy that doesn't matter who's in there. He, he's going to keep on fighting. There's some guys that you just can't put out. Well, well there's several things to that. You know, what do people expect from Canelo? That's one thing. One thing is that Canelo's fighting with his people around him. He wants to give the people what they want, which is a, a knockout. Maybe Canelo was trying to knock out his opponent from, since the beginning, from the first rounds. And when you're trying to do that, loading up on those shots, you may get tired in the later rounds. And I think that's what maybe happened. He wants to give the fans what they want, a knockout. Number two, Ryder also trains hard. He trains hard and he trains, obviously he's got an opportunity of his life to face Canelo Alvarez. And if he wins, he becomes, you know, a, a star and he becomes the, the man of boxing nowadays so he takes all the belts so obviously Ryder trained hard for that he's not going to stay in there to get hit for the fans to give him what they want you know Ryder is going to give his best and another thing is that you know um, like I said before he's a besides he's a training in Guadalajara he's a he's a family man he's a businessman he's a he kind of does not need boxing to live he can retire today and live happily for the rest of his life with the money he has but there's a lot of things that come to when he comes when he's back home in Wild. I had a lot of distractions, so that could be another factor. So there could be a lot of things, you know, combinated than just he didn't look good. Because I heard comments are saying that he was already on his way down. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. I just think that he was trying to fight different because of his crowd. He wants to give him a knockout. When you look, you're looking for the knockout. Most of the times, you're not going to get it because knockouts come on their own. And the other thing is, Ryder's also a fighter who also trains hard, just like any other fighters who are looking for that opportunity. So, you know, um, people just see the fight and immediately assume something without maybe looking at the full picture of what could have happened. How did the the camp, the the team, uh, react to that? That uh, Ryder said, "Hey, maybe Canelo is on the the decrease." Others saying, "Hey." It wasn't a vintage Canelo performance. Like, how, how did the whole team react to that when you went back to the gym? No, well, on the contrary, you know, we talked that Ryder's not an easy opponent. He's a, he's a softball. He's a, a softball. He, he knows how to work on that defense. He, was, he wasn't trying to get hit as much. And Canelo was trying to load up on those shots. So that's a factor right there that, that why he didn't maybe knock him out. Because when those, like I said before, knockouts come on their own. They don't, you can't be looking for it always. Kind of think that's what Canelo was doing. But um, he was trying to give the fans what they want. But um, on the contrary, the next day we came to the gym, he was saying that Ryder's, Ryder's not that easy. You know, he, he knows how to hide, he knows, he knows how to use his defense, and he was giving his, he was, he was giving his best. So um, it wasn't, for us, it wasn't like a, well, at least for me, and I can talk from my behalf, that I didn't think it was a, a bad performance. I just think that he was just loading up on those shots a lot because obviously you want to give a knockout to the fans. That's what at least what I would try to do. If my fans are there, my, 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 my people from Nogales are there, if I find in Nogales, I want to give him a knockout, and you obviously the fighter could tell that, and he's obviously being more defensive. Is he gonna come uh, watch you uh, this weekend? Did uh, you guys talk, and, and you tell him like, hey, like come? He might, he might, but like I said, he's a, he's a businessman, a family man. He's got a lot of things in his mind. So, um, but also he's a good friend. Sometimes, it's like um, he's came to my fights before without even mentioning nothing. He just pops out of nowhere. He doesn't even have a ringside ticket or nothing. <laughs> They always make rolls up. up. They they, they, they clear a seat. Point. Somebody moves a seat and so he just sits down. <laughs> but but he doesn't. He's, he might he might not. But uh, but I'm just you know focused on the main thing just to just to win. But um, just like he's focused on that one thing, which we also you know think he's gonna pull it off. He's focused on that one big fight. So you're, you're focused on Blue Nose. Uh, this is a rematch as well. And uh, you know you want to give a better performance. Uh, you told me a few weeks back. You know you want to give like a put a an umph uh, on a statement on this performance. But looking at him too, he looks intense. Like I feel like he knows like no, this is my my maybe my only shot to like get an opponent like you and get a win. Do you, do you feel this is could be like a a lot harder fight than what people were expecting? Well, that's that's, that's blue nose. You know, blue's not an easy fighter. If people think out there he's easy, that's not the way I think. I respect every fighter out there. They also train hard. They they work hard. They wake up early in the morning to train to work, run. And they all carry the same uh, same dream. We all share the same dream. We all want to be the best. So somebody who has that ambition and that dream, you can never bet against them. So that's the reason why I train hard because I'm always thinking about my opponent. If I run 10 laps, I was thinking maybe my opponent run 11 laps. So when that's the case, I run 15 laps. That's always the way I train because. Um, I always got to work hard for any opponent because you never know what to expect. 
The plan still, if you are victorious, Navarrete, right? Uh, I know you had mentioned that to me. You're still kind of seeing that as uh, the next like big fight for you? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that would be the next step if God willing we win this fight. Um, Vaquero Navarrete, and then from Vaquero Navarrete, it's always going to be another opponent, and maybe unified, and then we go on from there. Uh, my dream has always been to become one of the, the great Mexican fighters. You know, that's that's a goal. You know, the sky's the limit for me, and that's one of the things that I want to accomplish. But for me to do that, I first got to be Adam Lopez. Step by step, fight by fight, little by little, and then one day, maybe, I'll be able to make it. I know I mentioned it to you uh, before the interview, but let's uh, let's do a little bit of reflection uh, on this final question that I have. Uh, you've been a pro for a long time now, uh, 11 years. H have you thought out 10 years, 10 years, sorry. I don't want to add a, a, an extra year to you, but have you kind of thought out like how you want to end your career and, and like what you want to do after and how do you see like that final part if you had it your way? I've been thinking about it for the last couple of years because I know one day it's going to end. I still can't figure it out. It's going to be one of the toughest things in my life because I've been boxing ever since I was eight years old. Um, I've been competing ever since I was nine years old and, you know, 10 years professional, two-time Olympics. You know, I've been I've been active almost all my life. And the day that I retire, you know, it's going to be a sad moment. I don't know what I'm going to do in the, in the future. Obviously, you know, you got your investments and this and that, but something that fills your heart, something that fills your 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 meaning. You want to, I want to leave a legacy in boxing, but I always think about what am I going to do? Do I want to manage fighters? Do I want to become, maybe become a, have a promotional company? Um, something around boxing is something I would love to do, but it's something, it's something that, you know, have really, something has to really click. It has to come out natural and I have to find it because, um, you know, obviously we know we can't box for forever, but, oh, you know, this is going to be a, I think it's hard for all athletes. You know, I've talked, I've heard stories of Michael Phelps and other swimming athletes and other, when when they retired, other boxers where they say that when they retired, you know, that's where the easiest moment were to fall into alcohol, uh, alcohol and into, into different and a dark place because we've been competing all our lives. We don't know what's after that. So that's a, that's a question that I've been at telling myself for the, for the last couple of years and still haven't found it. Well, I, I think over time you will. Yeah, we all eventually do find, find that. But, Oscar, it's good chatting with you, man. As always, good catching up with you. Look forward to uh, this rematch uh, that this man has right here with Adam Blue Nose Lopez happening this weekend here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.